empowering your child with a healthy sense of self. Premium video. What you'll learn in this video, the barriers to a healthy sense of self, the two key components in building a foundation for a healthy sense of self, the four elements of empowerment and how to develop them in your child, in tools and strategies to help empower your child with a healthy sense of self. Hi, I'm Kathy O'Connell, writer, speaker, and presenter of these videos. In this video, I'm going to talk more in depth about how to empower your child with a healthy sense of self so that they can live happily and successfully with a disability. Let me begin with a quote that is so poignant for living with a disability. It's by M. Scott Peck. Life is difficult. This is the great truth. One of the greatest truths because once we begin to truly see that the truth, we begin to transcend it. Once we know that life is difficult, once we truly understand and accept it, then life is no longer difficult. Because the what is accepted, the fact that life is difficult no longer matters. In this video, I'm going to talk about some hard topics that do make life difficult for people with disabilities. I talk about them in the aspect of families and trying to bring attention to how these barriers to self-esteem can develop within family systems. I do not present this material as a means of causing people to feel bad about what they are doing or not doing with their child. I talk about these harder things because they need to be talked about so that we, as the people raising these beautiful, unique children, can be aware of them and try to avoid their pitfalls. The barriers to empowerment and the healthy sense of self. Codependency and the acts and drawn boundaries. The victim triangle and the impact of shame. Codependency and boundaries. Codependency typically takes some points within families when there is one family member with greater needs than the rest of the family. Historically, codependency has been associated in families where alcoholism it's impressive. However, in recent years, codependency has come to mean the dynamic that happens when family members 
cannot express their own needs and their true feelings. The development of healthy strong boundaries in all family members is the best way to counteract codependency within your family. The Victim Triangle, also known as the Drama Triangle, first described by Dr. Stephen Cartman in his 1968 article, Fairy Tales in Script Drama Analysis. For the use of this personal development training, I am applying the concept of the victim triangle to families with a person with a disability. Because oftentimes, when a person within the family has a disability, the victim triangle can unconsciously begin within between family members. And what is in the victim triangle? You have the three points of a triangle, and each point represents a different role that a person in the family can assume. The three roles are victim, persecutor, and rectangular. Quite often the person with a disability can be the victim because they are thought of as sad, helpless, needing help from others, being dependent. The Ratzinger is the person who denies their own needs to help another person in the family, usually the victim, the person perceived as the victim and they often become resentful down the road of continually having to help them. The birth secure is someone who operates primarily out of anger, is angry with the situation of having a family member with a death disability and can feel like they are owed something. It's important to note that the people who assume the role of persecutor and rescuer really feel like victims in themselves, but they take on these roles to match feeling like a victim. It's also important to note that in the dynamic of the triangle, people can switch roles between victim, persecutor, and rescuer without a moment's notice, and boundaries can become very confused and blurred. Look for a separate personal training video just on the victim triangle and how to avoid its pitfalls on this website, readingabilities.com. The impact of shame. What is shame? None of us like to talk about it. Shame is that feeling that we need to be fixed, that there's something inherently wrong with us. 
chain can be powerful enough to prohibit our true expression of who we are. Shame also would suggest our choices and our feelings that we have in this life. Shame typically manifests itself through codependency, people-pleasing behavior, constantly seeking approval, even in unhealthy situations, addictions, abuse of oneself, and feeling inadequate to others. Seeds of shame. There are four major areas where shame about having a disability can grow and influence a child. And they are at some follows. One, family. It's been talked about earlier because of the needs of certain family members. Boundaries can become blurred within families, and family members cannot see the person with a disability and say that per person. The family member with a disability cannot even take on the shame of other people in the family towards their disability. Shame cannot even be seen as a blanket of protection to avoid a person living the life they want. For example, Someone can be given the message of, you can't do that because of your disability, when in reality, you cannot do that because I feel some level of shame about your disability, and therefore I don't want you to do that. Second component in reinforcing shame in people with disabilities are the professionals in the service system that are intended to help people with disabilities. And again, this can be caused by a lack of boundaries and then failure to see the person as a separate person. It can also be reinforced by certain rules and regulations within the system that are supposedly intended to help a person with a disability but they really reinforce the message of you cannot do something because of your disability. And sometimes in the control of staff and the system help keep the shame alive in people with disabilities. The third component that keeps in shame alive in people with disabilities is in the media because of their constant focus on looks and perfection, because of their lack of inclusion of people with disabilities in the media because of their misrepresentation of people as either being a poor, helpless victim or either a great hero because of their disability. 
and they also seem to set the pace for who and what is susceptible. The that segment that reinforces the shame and the seeds of shame are society. Society at large tends to project their own shame that they are struggling with onto people with disabilities. There are often jokes and innuendos and unsubvoking rules that reinforce the shame of disability. And like the media, the continued lack of inclusion of people with disabilities in society reinforces those seeds of shame. How did someone heal from shame? The best way to heal from shame is to acknowledge it, to talk about it, and to release it from within you. Remember, nevertheless, a born with shame. It's a given to us. So we can always give it back to the source that it came from. Focus on the power within you, not outside of yourself. When we look for power outside of ourselves, that feeds the shame. Take responsibility for yourself and stop giving it away to others. Learn to forgive and look for teachable moments to show people about your disability and about the power within you. Love yourself and others unconditionally. When one addresses and codependency, develops and better boundaries, frees themselves from feeling like a victim, and heals from shame. They then begin to develop a healthy sense of self and a healthy sense of empowerment. Empowerment is something we can't see or touch. It's something we feel. Something that Helen Keller sums up well in this quote. The best and most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. They mustn't be felt with the heart. Two key components to empowering your child with the healthy sense of self. Love and expectations. Love your child for who they are, their very being, and not what they say or do. Expectations. Believe in your child's abilities and use these abilities that you can discover to build a happy, successful life for your child. Love is in the foundation of all healthy self-esteem. When a child is loved for who he is and not what he does, this is the foundation for a healthy self-esteem. When the child is valued for his abilities and strengths, 
He then laid the foundation for healthy self-esteem because he values who he is and he believes he doesn't have to do or produce anything to give him value. This increased self-esteem then enables your child to begin to feel empowered to deal with the unique challenges that his disability will eventually confront him with. He will have the extra layer of self-esteem that helps him go out into the world and respectfully demand equality and respect from all its interactions and encounters with others. If someone who has lived my whole life dealing on some level with adversity due to my disability, I can tell you that a sense of empowerment, a sense of expecting equality and dignity in all your interactions is one of the most significant determinants for a healthy, successful life with a disability. Why your child needs expectations. Your child needs to know that you believe in them, that you believe their life has a value, that you believe in their life has a meaning. Your child needs to know that you expect her to experience happiness and success in her life, no matter what form that may look like, because it's different for each and every child. What's important is that your child knows that you have expectations of her, that you see her abilities, and you know that she can accomplish some things and build upon her abilities. Four elements of empowerment. Empowerment is when a child learns from you that she deserves the same treatment and opportunities as anyone else and integrates this belief into her words and actions. This helps her See her disability as another facet of her whole self rather than something that takes away from who she is. First element of empowerment, defining oneself. Help your child define herself. Help her to figure out what she is and is not comfortable with. Help her to see whose agenda and whose goals she is following. It may be different from yours. A knowledge that this may involve her taking some risks. Second element of empowerment, boundaries. Help your child 
develop healthy boundaries, what they will and will not tolerate from others. Help your child develop boundaries around what he can and cannot do and feeling comfortable with that as well as how other people treat him. It takes a time to develop that, and oftentimes it takes mid-sedates and over sedates in doing that to develop the right comfort level for your child. Remember what your child will be comfortable with and what they want to achieve is unique and different for all of us. Third element of empowerment, recognizing potential. Actively join your child in the process of a Accepting her potential, her disability, and everything in between. This is where having expectations for your child can be very helpful because having expectations helps your child begin to believe in her potential. Remember, we all have our unique potentials and we all learn it through trial and error. Also, understand that the process of accepting yourself in one's disability it's a process that none of us can do for anyone else. Children have to do it in their own time. Fourth element of empowerment, the purpose of disabilities. Join your child in recognizing that there is a purpose to his disability. Help him to examine the deep meaning of living with a disability. Teach him. And while you're at, ask yourself, what am I meant? to learn by my child having a disability. Learn for the both of you how to flip the script from surviving with a disability to learning how to really live life with a disability. Tools to help empower your child with a healthy sense of self. Begin by writing down what you want for your child and then write a second list of what you really want for your child in this life. The two may be different and that's okay but it's the list of what you really want that matters most. Envision what you want for your child and focus on that for a few minutes each and every day. Create affirmations for yourself and your child and say them daily. They can include messages such as, I believe in you, I trust you, I know you can handle this, you are listened to, 
You are cared for. You are important to me. Surround yourself with people who affirm you and your child. And for those people who don't or who are unable to, learn how to develop better boundaries with those people or even learn how to let go of those relationships that drag you and your child down. Develop encouraging resources for yourself to remind you of your child's abilities and your own abilities as a parent. Get your child involved in the activities and help them to figure out what they can do and how to do it. In high school, my closest friends all ran track. And when I presented the idea of joining the track club to my mother, it was she that encouraged me to look into being the track team's manager because she knew that I couldn't physically run track, but she knew I wanted to be involved in that. Involved me in the activity where I could be with my friends and show my abilities. Keep a journal of all your child's positive traits and strengths. Then tape the to journal and turn it into a video to help affirm your child and give it to your child so that they can view it on a regular basis. That's like get out this video and the PDF that goes along with it to help reinforce your abilities as a parent and remind you about the strengths and the abilities that your child has. And that's a remember this quote by author Tom Robbins. The bottom line is that people are never perfect but love can be. We waste some time looking for the perfect love instead of creating the perfect love. Do not worry about being the perfect parent of a child with a disability. All they need from you, really and truly, it's the perfect love that you can give them. Take action now. As Marie Florio says, action without insight, it's work. Every personal development video of RadiantAbilities.com includes a downloadable PDF to help you implement insights into what you have learned. You can download that PDF right now at the link below. Take a few minutes while well, the information is fresh in your mind and record some thoughts and insights. Then jump over to the Facebook page, also at the link below, to join in on the discussion about what you have learned. Use this PDF as a resource 
offered strengthening your abilities and spirit in recognizing the potential and gifts of your child and what they have to share with the world. Thank you.